Ciao da Roma! I am in Italy's capital city and uh, we've got this place pretty much all to ourselves. Well, sorta. Of. <laughs> See, my mom and I are visiting in February, which is not typically a time when many tourists come to visit and that's kind of exactly why we came here to have one of the world's most visited cities all to ourselves. Hey guys, I'm Allie. I'm an on-camera host, travel expert, and the founder of Gals Abroad Getaways, where my mom and I plan and host small bespoke group trips for self-identifying women. If you're looking to travel deep and have immersive cultural experiences, all while staying in some of the most fabulous hotels in dazzling destinations all around the world, well, you're in the right place. So hit that subscribe button for more travel tips and guides, but for now, Let's dive into this video. Rome is of course a must visit city for many travelers, and it's not hard to understand why. You've got the Colosseum, the Trevi Fountain, and the Trifecta. Pizza, pasta, and wine. This is like chef's kiss, the place to be, but blame it on, I don't know, my only child syndrome, but I am not trying to share this city with anyone else, which is why coming at this time is pretty freaking amazing. So I'm kicking off the video with a pro tip. Travel in shoulder season if you want to, avoid crowds, get lower rates at hotels, and not have too much trouble securing reservations at the city's most coveted restaurants. Okay, so I know we kind of got a little bit off track, but I feel like that was an important point to make. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you to all the best places across this eternal city, showing you the best things to eat, see, and do while you're here in Rome. And the list is, quite long, so I'm not gonna waste any more time talking. Let's get going. Wait, sorry, one more thing. Before we get into the list, I want to give you a little bit of history and some information that I think would be helpful to you before you visit Rome. But if you're tight for time and you wanna get right into my list, then you can head to this timestamp right here. Oh, and if you want to follow in my footsteps and go on your own Rome adventure, I've organized this list into a written guide full of links to all the places that we'll visit in this video. I will drop it in the description if you want to check it out. Rome is often referred to as the Eternal City, and it's known for its iconic architecture, Colosseum, and mind-blowing food scene. Rome is the capital of Italy, and it's located in the Lazio region in the center of the country, just about 15 miles inland from the sea and situated right along the Tiber River. Now, any attempt to give you the Cliff Notes version of Rome's history is foolish on my part, but let me just say that this is one of the most powerful ancient empires in the world that has been attracting visitors for millennia. Visit Rome if you're looking for the perfect mix of art, culture, and ancient history with a healthy helping of mouth-watering food. Like seriously, pack your eating pants, my friends. All right, let's get into this list. Number one, check into Malot Roma, a colorful, stylish boutique hotel located just a short one minute walk from the Trevi Fountain. Aside from its unbeatable location, this artsy hotel immediately captures your attention with its playful and eclectic contemporary art that's featured throughout its rooms. Not only is this hotel room absolutely stunning, and I adore that they are not afraid to use bold colors and bold patterns, um, but it is one of the most thoughtfully designed rooms I have ever stayed in, especially in Europe. I'm gonna show you, this is gonna sound like such a silly thing, um, but it honestly makes such a huge difference. In the bathroom, not only do they have plugs, oops, which many European bathrooms, you will not find plugs for like hair tools, they have an American outlet. I mean, the consideration is major key. I love the massive, gorgeous shower. Drying rack to keep your towels warm, so nice. Even just like the simple things, like thinking to have a hook for the towels. It seems like such a small thing to mention, but it's huge. And there's a setting in the bathroom in the evening so that when you walk in, 
the lights are motion censored. So in the middle of the night, if you have to go up to the bathroom, you walk in, poof, lights come on. Game changing. Also, another little thing that I love, in the nightstand, this little top, it's where you charge all of your stuff. So you can hide all your ugly cords and it looks a little bit more organized and pretty. But the piece de resistance is... Linda. Linda. <laughs> <laughs> still has a mask on, <laughs> just, I just realized. Safety first, kids. Yeah. Um, but this vanity, how do we turn on the vanity? Oh, we gotta right show, here, let's no, see. Right here on the right hand side. Here. Turn it on, turn it on, boom, let there be light. Wow, that's a lot of light, yeah. but like, for doing your makeup, mm -hmm. that's what, oh, you can turn it on and yeah. oh, adjust. adjust. And we love a closet with lots of storage and full length mirrors. It seems like a silly thing to note, but you would be surprised how many hotel rooms do not have full length mirrors in them. Like, come on, what are we doing? This one, gotta check the outfit, make sure it's Bellissimo. Bellissima? Bellissimo. I'm working. Bellissimo. I'm working on my Italian. We'll get there. We'll get there. But this, all about it. Even, even, even the storage for the suitcases up above so it doesn't clutter the space. They have thought of quite literally everything. The hotel is really a refreshing change of pace from many of the more traditional Roman hotels while still delivering exceptional five star luxury service from check in to check out. Number two, book one of the most beloved and unique tours you'll ever take with the Rome 500 experience. You're not gonna believe our ride today. Ready, ready, ready? Her name is Sophia Loren. <laughs> Linda's already in the car. <laughs> we booked their seven hidden gems of Rome tour and I have specifically requested, of course, their pink car. On the tour, you'll see classic sites like the Colosseum and Circus Maximus, but you'll also be taken to some of the lesser known locations, like the keyhole of Piazza Cavallari di Malta. We need to come over here and peek through this itty bitty hole, and I'll show you what you see through it, okay? Where you can see one of the most incredible views of St. Peter's Basilica, perfectly framed through the keyhole in this door. We were lucky enough to drive along with the owner, Elvise, on a private tour. Everyone say hi! Ciao. Meet our tour guide, Elvise. Mm. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna make 500 people smile today, right? Yes. Yes. Even more. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Truly, this is one of the best tours that you can take to sort of acquaint yourself to the city on one of your first days in Rome. Number three, make a wish at the Trevi Fountain. Oh, and um, get there early if you want to beat the crowds. So it's totally cliche, but you kind of have to come to the Trevi Fountain and toss a coin over your shoulder. So here's how the legend goes. One coin over your left shoulder. You're gonna ensure a return to Rome. Two coins, you're going to move to Rome, and three is sort of like the trifecta. You're gonna come back to Rome, you're gonna move to Rome, and you're gonna find love in Rome. So, sounds good to me. Should we give it a go? I wonder if my aim is gonna be good. Ready? I don't think it went in. What happens if you don't make it in the fountain? What's that legend? P.S. If you're wondering what happens to all the coins that are tossed into the fountain every year, the money amounts to about 1.5 million euros and it's given to a Catholic charity to help the poor and homeless in Rome. And this is why you come early. I cannot begin to express to you how important it is to come to major monuments in Rome like the Trevi Fountain, the Spanish Steps, early in the morning. Like, pretty much have this entire place to myself. And we were here last evening and the crowds were bananas. So if you can come to these monuments, especially during the week when people are commuting to work, fantastic. But if at all possible, avoid the weekends and avoid like the middle of the day or towards like sunset hours because it will be slammed and you'll just be packed up like sardines. Instead, this is very peaceful and serene and great for photos. <laughs> Number four, book a photo shoot. I'd love to introduce you guys to the amazing Paula! Hi. How cute is she? 
Um, you guys, one of the best ways that I love to remember my vacations by is having incredible photos taken by local photographers. And so she is incredible, so talented. We've been shooting all around Rome this morning. And if you'd like to work with her on your future trip, I'm gonna link her Airbnb experience in the description below so that you guys can book her and have incredible photos to remember your vacation by. We snapped some photos at the Trevi Fountain, then moved along to shoot in front of the Pantheon and finished with these iconic shots of the Colosseum. Seriously, Paula is insanely talented and so incredibly fun to work with. Number five, go on a tour of the Colosseum. All right, listen, you can't come to Rome and not visit one of the new seven wonders of the world. And let me put it this way. If ancient history had its own version of the Super Bowl, this would be where it's played. Look at me making all these sports references. <laughs> Built in the first century, this is the largest amphitheater in the world. And it has a pretty brutal and bloody past. Movie Gladiator ring any bells? And there's some pretty gruesome stats as to how many animals and humans were killed within these walls. But despite its less than pleasant history, millions of people flock to the Colosseum every year. Now, pro tip, if you do plan to visit the Colosseum and the Vatican during your visit to Rome, I would suggest getting the Roma Pass. I'll drop some details about this in my blog post. Number six, a visit to the Vatican, regardless of your religious affiliation, is an absolute must when you're in Rome. Plus, if there's any country counters out there, Vatican City is actually an independent city state, giving it the title of the smallest country in the world. And it clocks in at just over 100 acres. Now to put that in perspective, that's about one eighth the size of New York's Central Park. I gotta be honest, religion is certainly not my area of expertise, um, but even if you're not religious, the Vatican is still definitely worth a visit, even just to see the Sistine Chapel and some of the Vatican museums, which are among actually the largest in the world. The Vatican is basically headquarters for the Catholic Church, and thousands of visitors flock here each and every year. St. Peter's Basilica is the most important church for Catholics, and it was built by artists of the likes of Michelangelo and Bernini over a site that was considered to be the tomb of St. Peter. I highly recommend visiting the Vatican with a guide to really help put all of this into context. All right, so I've got just a few pro tips for you when you're planning your visit. Number one, Tuesdays and Thursdays tend to be sort of like the least busiest days, and that's because the Pope usually takes audience on Wednesdays, and of course, the weekends are slammed. Also, if you're visiting, make sure that you are dressing modestly, your shoulders and knees are covered, and as soon as you know that you are coming to Rome and you want to visit the Vatican, make sure that you buy your tickets in advance, especially if you are coming in the summertime. Number seven, head over to the Trastevere neighborhood. This was my favorite spot to wander around, but it's also where we ate most of our meals in Rome. But there was one restaurant in particular that really stood out to us. Antica Oisteria Rugantino. This charming restaurant is really a local spot in Rome. The service was warm, the wine list was amazing, but what really blew my mind was their classic Roman pasta sampling dish. This is my ideal at a restaurant, is a sampler platter, if you will. And we've got four of the most iconic dishes here in Italy, all on this board. We've got riscia, carbonara, Cacio e pepe and amantmitriciana, <laughs> which I can never remember the name of, but we're going to try all of them right now. For me, this was the best way to try all of Rome's most famous pasta dishes and decide which one you like the best so that you know what to order for the rest of your trip. Oh, and um, for even more Rome restaurant racks, make sure to check out the link in the description of this video. Number eight, visit Largo de Torre, Argentina. If you're a crazy cat person like me and Linda, you'll love this spot and you'll find it right in between Piazza Navona and Piazza Venezia. Most famously, this is the site where historians say Julius Caesar was stabbed and it's currently undergoing major restorations. Okay, but aside from all the important historical reasons why you would come here, this is also home to Rome's cat sanctuary that's actually been around since 1929 when the cats started hanging out in this archeological site. And if you just stand and watch closely, you will definitely be able to spot some of them 
um, at the moment, some of them seem to be using some of the piles of um, dirt as their litter box. <laughs> we found the mother load of the kitties. We got one, two, three, and then a little white one over. <laughs> we just spotted the area where they're getting fed. So these cats are well fed. These are like, they're pretty big boys. So they're taken well care of. That didn't make any sense. They're taken good care of. They're being taken care of. They're fed daily. <laughs> now I wasn't allowed to film inside the cat sanctuary, but of course Linda and I went inside to visit with the kitties and make a donation. And if you're feeling generous when you visit, I highly encourage you to make a donation as well. Number nine, if you're looking for one of the most incredible places to eat in Rome, with some of the best views of the Colosseum, you need to book a table at Aroma. You'll find this one-star Michelin restaurant at the top floor of the Palazzo Manfredi Hotel with its panoramic views of Rome's most iconic monument. Now you can choose from a few different tasting menus, but what I loved most about the experience was that the food paid homage to the classic Roman cuisine with a bit of a modern twist while not being overly fussy and intimidating. Pro tip, you're going to need to make a reservation well in advance if you want to snag a table. But if you can't score a seat here, try their sister cocktail bar, The Court. It's on the lower level of the hotel and offers another unique perspective of the Colosseum. But just be sure to make a reservation there as well. If you are looking for the best place to have an aperitivo in Rome and watch the sunset in one of the most iconic locations, you have to come to the court. It's been named one of the 50 best cocktail bars in the world. And I have to imagine that the view might have something to do with it. Last but not least, number 10, you've got to book a walks tour. We chose their famous pasta making class. Now, this was actually the first thing that we did when we arrived in Rome, and it was super helpful to have a hands-on tasty activity to do in the evening while adjusting to the new time zone and trying not to go to bed at 7 p.m. The class takes place in a local Trastevere restaurant where you'll learn how to make pasta from scratch with local chefs in a small group setting. We made a classic Roman pasta dish, Amatriciana, which is this tomato-based pasta flavored with pecorino cheese and guanciale, which is cured pork jowl, if you didn't know. Throughout the class, you're drinking wine, learning about Roman cooking culture, and of course, the evening ends in the best way possible, eating the delicious and fresh pasta you've just made. Oh, and um, you get to make gelato too, because what evening in Italy is complete without gelato? Thanks for traveling with me through Rome. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit that thumbs up, and while you're at it, why not hit subscribe at the same time? And if you want to see all of these recommendations, plus even more organized into a very nice and tidy list, make sure to click the link in the description of this video. But, well, I'm not wearing a watch, so this is kind of a, a moot point, but I know it's time for me to go and catch my flight, so I will see you guys somewhere fabulous around the world sometime very soon. Bye!